Brought to you by Baby Lock for the love of sewing. Sulky Threads. Express yourself with sulky and create with confidence. Our exclusive fabric partners. Be sure to look for their newest lines of fabric. Welcome to Quiltmaker's Block Network. I'm Diane Harris with Quiltmaker, and today we're going to make Mary Mary, block number 341 for Quiltmaker's 100 Blocks, volume four. It's a block that was designed by Meg Hockey. The techniques that we'll be covering today are how to make Dresden plates and how to use crayons to highlight your block. In order to make Mary Mary, you'll need a solid white fabric for the background, some muslin to line the block with what, as you do your embroidery, assorted reds for the Dresden plate, and just a touch of green fabric. You can see everything that you need to make this block on the right hand side of your screen. So you'll want to trace the lines of the block using a fine tip permanent pen. And you can see that we've already done that. And then you're going to take your crayons and tint the different parts of the block. And right now I'm just going to focus on the leaf. And it's really a good idea to color the areas that you want to tint with the white crayon first. That allows the colors to blend a little better. So I put a layer of white underneath first of all, like so. And now I'm going to add the green. And I'm just going to start with kind of a light touch and fill in the leaf with some green. So I would kind of fill in that whole area. And then if I wanted to add a little shading, I might add a little darker line along the edge or however you wanted to do that. This is very forgiving, so you can't really mess it up. And I would just fill that all in. So then when you have all the areas filled in that you would like to tint, it's important to heat set them with an iron. And all you do to do that is take a white paper towel, and lay it over the top of your block, and with a hot dry iron, press over here. And you would move it around, do all the different areas of your block. And you, want, you do want to be careful if you get green here and then you move the paper towel over here, you don't want that green to transfer back on. So you might use several paper towels to do the heat setting. So once you've colored everything in, uh, and you've heat set the tint, you're going to uh, hand embroider these lines. And I'm using two strands of embroidery floss, and I wanna show you one thing that I've learned over the years about embroidery floss. Here is the whole six strand section that I've cut off of my skein. And I'm gonna separate off two strands in order to stitch. So I un ravel those two strands. And then instead of just threading up right away with this, you wanna separate those two strands. You always wanna separate. However many strands you're using, you separate them. Then you put them back together and thread up your needle. Because that way, when you do your embroidery, it allows those strands to lay right next to each other. Otherwise, they're always twisting and turning and they're never gonna lay really nicely for you. Okay, so I've added the lining behind the white block. And the purpose of the lining is when you're hand embroidering, you'll have little tails or little places where you travel underneath, and that lining helps so that none of those things are visible from the top side. So I'm gonna start my embroidery by coming up from the back side, and I've knotted my thread. So the back stitch is kind of a, a stitch backward and then I come up ahead of where and right here is where this is where this this current stitch is going to be and here's where the next stitch is going to be so I come up and you see the stitch is it kind of heads in a backwards direction and I'm going to make this current stitch and then I'm going to come up here so this is the current stitch and then this area is the next stitch. 
So the distance that you travel here, the distance from where the thread's coming out to where your needle comes out, is going to be the size of the next stitch. And I would just continue to do a back stitch, changing the colors as I needed to, until I had covered all of that traced pattern. So now we're to the really fun part where we get to make the Dresden plates. And I wanted to show you how I make a template from the pattern. So I made a photocopy of the pattern here, and this is the little pattern for the blade of the Dresden plate. And what I'm gonna do is just put glue stick on the back of there, and then I'm gonna add it to my template material. And here I have just regular cardboard. It's not very thick. You can also use a template plastic if you'd prefer. And just press that down on there real nice. And I usually give it a, a few minutes to dry. And then I use a ruler and a rotary cutter to cut this out exactly on the lines. So this is what I end up with. It's this perfect little template that I can use now to cut the blades for my Dresden plates. So you'll want to cut your Dresden plate blades. And what's really great is that you can cut them from two and a half inch strips. See how nicely that fits on there? So what I do is I layer several strips. I have two here. I would layer up to about four and still be able to cut accurately. So then I'm, I would just lay my template on here and I would use a ruler and a rotary cutter and you can either leave it right there or you can move it away and make your cut. Make your cut just like so. And then I would put it back carefully and I would move my ruler to this side and I would make my cut again. I might have to switch hands here this cut there we go and so you can just continue cutting your blades by rotating the template then you would make your next cut there rotate and make your next cut so in that way you end up with a lot of blades in a really short time here we are with all of our different red blades and the next step is to take these and fold them with right sides together across the wide end. See, this is the wide end and the narrow end. So across the wide end, you're going to sew with a quarter of an inch seam. And you wanna be sure at this point that you shorten your stitch length down to about 1.8 millimeters. You can't have a huge stitch going across here because if you only have three stitches, they're going to pull out. So shorten your stitch length up and then I chain sew these in my sewing machine a whole bunch at a time. So you'll end up with these nice little waving flags. So then it's time to turn them and make them into a Dresden plate blade. So the first thing is to trim just a tiny little triangle off this folded edge. So you just want to remember that it's off the folded edge that you trim. And then it helps if you put your finger in here and use your fingernail to press that seam open. And you, then you want to turn it inside out, or right side out, and use something not super pointed, but about like this is about right, and very gently push that tip out. And you can usually eyeball getting this right in the middle, and then you want to take this to the ironing board and press. So that's how you get your little Dresden plate blade. And you'll need 16 of those in order to make one Dresden plate. I sew my Dresden plates together in pairs first, and then I sew the pairs together so that I get sets of four. And this is, comes in handy if you're making a lot of Dresden plates because it, you don't have to keep counting all the way to 16. If you know if you have sets of four, if you join four of the sets, then you have your 16. The one thing I would say when you're sewing these together is you definitely, you're going to still have your stitch length short and you want to start at this end and match up those folded edges and sew about three stitches forward and then back stitch about three stitches and then finish up your seam. 
and you want this folded edge here to line up nicely. A lot of times down here at the raw edge, they won't match up perfectly and that's okay because you're gonna cover that up anyway. But it is important that they line up nicely here at the top edge. So you'll have four sets of four and join them together to complete your Dresden plate. You'll take your finished Dresden plate and place it on the block that you've embroidered and tinted and then use whatever method of applique you want to applique this down. You can applique it by hand, in which case I would use a red thread to match the applique, or I've had really good luck appliquing by machine with just a tiny straight stitch and using red thread and just sewing on top of the Dresden plate. And I usually, I use a walking foot to keep everything in place and just pivot at each outside point and inside point and applique this down. And then the final finishing touch is a button of some kind. And you can play around with the size or the color. A green button would also look terrific. Sew it on by hand. I would probably use either red or green thread. That's up to you. And there you have your finished Mary Mary block. So with one Mary Mary block, some of the things you could do are just put it in a beautiful frame hang it on your wall during the holidays. You could put a border or two around it and make a small wall quilt. It would make an adorable little pillow. If you wanted to make a second block, it would also be really cute at each end of a table runner. You'll find Mary Mary and 99 other amazing blocks in Quiltmaker's 100 Blocks, Volume 4. Thank you so much for being with me today, and I hope you'll join us next time for another episode of Quiltmaker's Block Network. I messed this up. We're gonna have to start over. <laughs>